One of the biggest things that separates a pro vocal mix from an amateur vocal mix is how well you address the harsh frequencies. These harsh frequencies are typically caused from sibilant sounds like S's and T's and Ch's and Ch's and all that stuff. And how well you address those can make a huge difference in how professional the final result sounds. So in today's video, we're gonna go through Logic's built-in de-esser, which is the main tool that you use to address this, go through all the settings and really understand how to set one to address those harsh frequencies so that your vocal feels smooth while still being bright and airy. Now, two quick notes before we get into it. One, this video is part of the Pro Vocal Mix series. We're going through everything you need to know to create a professional vocal mix in Logic. If you haven't seen the other videos, definitely go check those out. And two, I've put together a completely free downloadable guide. There's a link in the description below that's going through all the six steps that we're doing throughout this process so that next time you're mixing vocals, you can just quickly reference back to that instead of coming back to this video series. So be sure to pick it up. It's completely free. But let's go and jump into Logic. So you'll find the DSer under Dynamics. It's called the DSR2, and it looks like this. Now, with this, there's three main knobs and then three main options. And then we have two meters over here that we'll look at in just a second. Now, the first thing you need to know about a de-esser is that it's basically EQ and compression happening in one, but for the very specific purpose of de-essing your signal. I mean, what a ridiculous name, right? But it's think of it as like de-harshening your signal or de-essing, if you think that's funnier. I think it's funnier. Okay, so it's an EQ and compressor. So what you are functionally doing is you're setting a range that it's gonna listen to where the S's or sh's or t's, the harsh frequencies are most prominent. And then it is either going to compress just those frequencies or the entire signal every time it detects too much of those frequencies. So EQ and compression kind of slammed into one. Now it's focused on the frequency range, the highest frequency range, typically 5K and above, but there's actually a case where I have found that it makes a really big difference in the vocal that's a little bit lower than that that we're gonna look at at the end of this video. So let's go through these options really quick so you understand what all you're actually setting and how to set this for your vocal. So the first thing you need to know is this threshold. Now, a threshold, when a signal passes a threshold, it's gonna tell it to turn it down. But what's amazing about this de is that it has both absolute and relative mode. So it defaults to relative mode, and I'd say for 90% of vocals, that's what you want. Because what that means is that whether it's a quiet signal or a loud signal, it's going to detect the threshold relative to the total signal. So if it's a quiet word, but that S peaks up really extreme relative to that quiet word, it will still catch it. If it's a loud word, and you know maybe it's louder in general, but that S, it's not actually hitting S's, it won't be catching those. And then when one does peak up, it will catch it relative to that louder word volume. So it's a more modern feature. It's pretty amazing. Classic DSers did not have this. They were more of the absolute style. So I don't think I'd ever actually change this to absolute. I'd keep it on relative. Okay, and then the max reduction is how much it's gonna turn down. So the threshold determines if it is an S that needs to be turned down, or well, I'll say S anytime I'm referring to these sibilant frequencies. So does it need to be turned down is determined by the threshold. When it passes the threshold, will it turn it down? And then the max reduction is what amount is the most it will let it go down. So in, it will pass it by this much, but you say, I'm only gonna let it turn it down this much, or do you wanna say, I'm gonna let it really slam it down 25 decibels, which is a lot. So you have the range here of 25 all the way up to zero decibels. So you could have very subtle, very light de or very aggressive de if you happen to have really harsh S's. And then your frequency is just the frequency that it's listening to. Now there's two different filters that it can be listening to. It can be listening to a bell, a notch, so kind of just like a specific band of frequencies, or it can be listening to the entire high shelf. So from here all the way up. I think that's reversed on your signal, so it probably looks this way on an EQ. But what we're talking about is basically this highest area up here all the way up. So either a notch or the whole shelf all the way up. And it defaults to being that shelf, but in some cases you might actually want it to be a notch. We'll look at that again in a minute, but we'll keep it on the shelf for now. And then the filter solo allows us to just listen to just the frequencies that we're hearing right here. And then split versus wideband. The split is either only gonna turn down this filtered range, or it's gonna turn down, if you set it to wide, the entire signal, wide being the wide frequency spectrum versus split, just that split off frequency range. In most cases, I find split to sound a little bit more natural. It's only turning down just the S's or just the frequencies that are harsh. But on some vocals, if it's really aggressive, I found that wide can sound a little bit better. But most of the time I would keep this on split. So keep mode on relative, range on split for most vocals. But if you're really struggling to dial it in, try wide and just see if that sounds a little bit better. Okay, let's listen to what this sounds like. So I filter solo on, so it's only gonna be hearing what I've set in terms of my frequency and this high shelf here. So we're just hearing 7K and up. 
if I switch it to the notch filter, it gets a little bit on both sides of 7K. So as I bring it down, now we're getting down into kind of the main presence area of the vocal. Up here is more the harsher SE area. So listening to your frequencies and solos can help you identify, but don't get lost in solo. You just want to use this to check if, if that's really catching everything that you feel like you're hearing. Now, real quick, if this video is helpful and you think it would help other people, could you be sure to like it? It makes a huge difference in terms of YouTube knowing to show it to other people. So if it's helpful, you think it would help someone else, be sure to like it. And if you really don't like it, be sure to hit the dislike twice. Okay, let's get back into it. Another way that you can determine what frequency to set this to is by watching your EQ while they're singing and when an S spikes up, you'll see it up here, what frequency range is that really spiking up? So for weeks we can be so discreet. So it looks like for her, she's somewhere around six to eight K, this range up here. So for weeks. Probably with the harshest around nine, but I do want to catch down around six. So I'm going to keep this set to six, which is actually the default if I hold option and click on it, it just goes to six it comes up on 7k which is fine too but we'll put this back to 6k which seems like a good option for her voice and then what you want to be looking for with this threshold to adjust it is just is this detection meter over here only really spiking as in turning yellow when she's hitting S's or sh's or other harsh sounds. Sometimes you might have a ka or a ta or some of those sounds that have those harsh frequencies as well, but is it only doing it when you're hearing things that are harsh? So, so for weeks we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding now we're breaking the heat. Pretty good, right? That heat must have a little bit of something, but you said the t got caught in there as well, but mostly it's just catching the s's and those sibilant sounds. So this default nine point, negative 9.5 is pretty good because remember it's relative. So it's listening to whatever the total volume for that little section of the word being sung is and setting that to be 9.5 relative. So I find this to be a pretty good setting point for most cases, I, unless I want to be more aggressive. If you want to have more aggression than this has given you, you can bring this down and then the re max reduction can be extended because it's gonna compress relative on how much it passes that threshold. So as the signal passes that threshold, if it gets way past it, it's gonna compress it more. And then you have more that you can play with with your mass max reduction. But the thing you gotta be careful of is starting to capture more than you want. So if I bring this all the way down, so for weeks, the entire we vocal is now so being detected, right? So I don't want that to be happening. I just want the just those harshest frequencies to be captured. So for weeks, we can be so discreet. So I think on this vocal, even around 15, negative 15. That's pretty good, but I'm now starting to get more on my max reduction meter, which is just an important thing to realize is now it's compressing it more. It's DSing it more because more is passing that threshold. Okay, so we can leave this at negative 15.5 because it's still only catching the things we want. The big thing that you need to be paying attention to to set this properly for your vocal is the max reduction. So now that we know it's only detecting the S's and it's basically giving us as much range as I want to turn, turn it down, and we only are listening and turning it down at this frequency. And actually, that's a good reminder. I actually think on this vocal, I probably want it to capture here and everything up. So let's switch between these and notice if you notice a difference. So for weeks, we so this can is on the filter be so discreet. Versus the shelf. So for weeks, we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding. Now we're breaking the. So the shelf feels a little bit more obvious to me. So for weeks we can versus the filter. So for weeks we can But I feel like so there's still some s s sounds that are passing through with this notch, probably actually higher than where the top of this filter is catching, this bell is catching. So again, this is 6k right in the middle of this, so it's getting a little bit below and a little bit above, but then there's going to probably be some way up higher. So I think this is better, but I just need to play around more with the max reduction because it's a little bit too obvious now. So for weeks, we that's very obvious compared to so for weeks, we, we hear still hearing some of those S's, but I'm just being tricked because it really just means I don't have full control over those S's. So what I'd rather do is have it really containing them too much and then set my max reduction so that I'm bringing the relative level of those harsh sounds, those harsh S's and whatnot down relative to the lead vocal. Now, you can do this in solo, it's a good starting point, but also always check it in the context of the mix because there's high frequencies that could be kind of 
overshining the S's in your vocal mix. So you might actually need them to spike up more than you think you do in solo in the context of the full mix. So we'll do it in solo first, but just keep that in mind. So for weeks we so, can be so no discreet until your life gets Bring the max reduction down. And now we're breaking the heat. Let's do that one more so time. So for weeks we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding. Somewhere now in there. breaking the heat. Feels pretty good to me. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just listening for when it just starts to sound a little bit too much. If you go too much, it's going to sound you're like you're creating a lisp to them. It's going to feel very artificial. Uh, but if you get it at the sweet spot, basically just right before you notice that. So if you start to hear that a lot around here, so for weeks, we then you just need to scale it back. So in my case, I started to notice it just feeling like a little bit too much containing on the S's right around, you know, eight, nine. So I just scaled it back a little bit. So bring it down until you notice it too much and then scale it back a little bit. So, so for weeks, we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding. Now we're breaking the heat. That feels pretty good to me. Okay, let's listen to the context and see if we still feel like that's the right amount. So for weeks, we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding. Now we're breaking the heat. So for weeks, we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding. Now we're breaking the heat. So listening, you know, I bypassed it often back on, felt like I just wanted a little bit more of those S's back, so I actually scaled the max reduction down just a little bit, or back just a little bit, so it's less extreme. Now, there is a case, I've over time figured out that there's this main range that's 5K and above, or 5K and above, probably for you on the video, but there's also this little pocket right around 3.5K that on some vocals, the shoes in particular can just sound a little bit too harsh and you might need to dip down a little bit around those that 3.5k range so it's become more and more common for me to set a second de -esser to address just that frequency range so with this i want to have it on this filter and this notch here as opposed to on the high shelf and basically you just want to set it somewhere around 3.5k i often listen in solo to find where i feel like those and shiz stand out the most at this frequency range and I'm just listening to this pocket here as opposed to the high shelf. So let's find that frequency first. So for weeks we can be so discreet Until your life gets too demanding Now we're breaking the heat So for weeks we... I feel like that's pretty good right around there. So for weeks we... So right around 3.5. And now what I want to do is just set this to only really turn it down a little bit. I find that just a little bit, three to five decibels of turning it down will often so be enough. So for weeks we can be so discreet Until your life gets too demanding Now we're breaking the heat Okay, and in the context of the mix. So for weeks we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding now we're breaking the key. And listen to this, we'll do a before and after. So this is before. So for weeks we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding now we're breaking the key. And then with the deesser. So for weeks we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding now we're breaking the Okay, so final note is on plug-in order because it really matters where you put this de in your chain, but there's no one right answer. So it's very common to put the de very first and then do any sort of EQ moves after. A, a pretty common thing for me is that I'll actually do like a main EQ where I'm doing most of my basic EQ moves, but then I might have this tube EQ where I'm really just boosting the high end a little bit extra and I'll want to do that after my de -essers. So I have the main EQ, then I have de then I have this tube EQ that's brightening it just a little extra, kind of making up for what I might have lost from the de -essers. And then a third place is after we set our compression, which we're going to do in the next video, after you set your compression, because S's tend to be quieter sounds but harsh in frequency, sometimes they get brought back out by compression. So I'll typically de before compression, and then if I notice the compressor bringing those S's out too much again, I might do just copy a second 
second layer of them down after the compression. Addressing these frequencies is very, very important if you want your mix to sound professional. If you have harsh things in the vocal, the listener's not gonna be able to enjoy the experience. It's gonna be distracting. And it's gonna make them not wanna listen to it because it's harsh and it's fatiguing. So addressing this is really, really crucial. Before you go, be sure to grab the Pro Vocal Checklist from the link in the description below. It's completely free. And that way you can quickly reference it anytime you're working on mixing vocals in the future. And I'd love to hear from you. Have you been using de on your vocal? Did this help unlock any of that for you? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time, I can only